Thank you so very much, uh, Brother Alberto, and thank you very much for allowing me uh, the pleasure and the honor to honor my friend, Holly Mitchell, a true partner of mine in the California State Senate. Let's give it up for Holly Mitchell. Now, I am very proud to be here before each and every one of you as a former community organizer who now uh, has a privilege to be the president of the California State Senate. And as we celebrate Coco's 25th anniversary tonight, we must realize the significance of this moment that we live in today. Now, as we all know, our movement hasn't always had champions in the halls of political power, but we're changing that today. Come on. And the very fact that we are bestowing the Augustus Hawkins Award on a great champion of social justice speaks volumes to the recognition of the political paradigm shift taking place in Sacramento, in our state capital. Now, this started a little while back with then Speaker Antonio Villaraigosa, and then was followed up with the great former Speaker, Speaker Emeritus, now Congresswoman Karen Bass, who is here with us today. And this is significant because the story of now is that we have true tested progressives in the Hall of Power. And I want to share a few things about Holly Mitchell because everything that Alberto just articulated very eloquently speaks to who Holly Mitchell is and the set of values that she adheres to and not just the theoretical but rather what she puts into practice. I know because I witness it every single day. I know because I appointed her as a member of the Senate Rules Committee that has the confirmation powers of all the appointments of the governor of the greatest state of the greatest country on planet Earth. Now, this is a woman who truly believes that every single child, irrespective of the hue of their skin, irrespective of their zip code, their socioeconomic status, irrespective of the language that they speak at home, irrespective of their legal status, that every child deserves to breathe into their lungs clean air and drink clean water. Now she has proved it by moving forward a measure dealing with fracking in South Los Angeles, dealing with the extraction of dirty fossil fuels that harm our children in South LA, in Boyle Heights, and elsewhere. So this is a woman at the height of one of the most polarizing debates in the country with regards to climate change. And believe it or not, we still got climate change deniers among us. This is a woman who stood strong, tall, and proud on this debate in the state capitol. Because together with Holly Mitchell, we moved together the most far-reaching progressive climate change policy, not in the history of the state of California, not in the history of the United States of America, but in the history of the world. With Senate Bill 350, I want to thank you, Senator Holly Mitchell. On the issue of child care, this is a woman who understands as a single mother, I as the youngest child of a single immigrant mother with a third grade education, this is a woman who understands that not all women can participate in our economy unless they have access to quality child care. And she understands that this is an economic issue for the state of California. If single mothers cannot rely and depend and have the confidence that they can leave their child in a place where they'll be safe, in a place where they will grow academically, that by the time they get to kindergarten, they'll know how to count. They'll know how to say their ABCs. They will know how to count their numbers and know the colors and sit in a chair and you're ready to learn. There is not one single individual in the Assembly or in the Senate who has been a bigger champion on the issue of child care in the state of California than Senator Holly Mitchell.
The issue of criminal justice, or more specifically, restorative justice. We have interests who want to continue to criminalize, and this is a woman who believes we shouldn't be criminalizing, we should be restoring, we should be rejuvenating, we should be empowering all individuals, but especially those who have been marginalized socioeconomically and politically in this country, in this state, for much too long. This is a woman who's had the courage to take on the very strong political interests, the very established political interests on dealing with the issue of restorative justice. And how do we heal communities that have been ripped apart? How can we heal communities whose fathers are in prison today? Because everything is correlated with each other. And she intuitively, politically, and spiritually is in touch with this. She understands whether it's type 2 diabetes, whether it's obesity, whether it's clean air, whether it's carbon, black carbon, NOx, SOTS, or particularly matter 2.5, when our children breathe into our lungs, and the number one reason for absenteeism in our public schools is due to asthma. She knows when you don't have access to higher education, she knows that there's a correlation, and the common denominator is the issue of poverty. But then it begs the question, why are we, do we live in poverty? And why are there so many who have the hue of our skin live in poverty today, as they did yesterday, as they most likely will tomorrow, and in the near future? She understands this keenly well. She understands whether it's Pelican Bay, San Quentin or Corcoran. We need to break the chains of oppression and make sure that none of our children, none of our children go on to Pelican Bay, but rather they should be going to Cal State LA or UCLA. Now, as you all know, this woman is no shrinking violence. Not at all. She's strong, she's tall, she's bold, and she believes what she believes in. And she wears her emotions and what she, her values right here on her sleeve. Now, I'm honored to have her in the California State Democratic Caucus. I'm honored to have her perspective. I'm honored to have her presence because it speaks to who we are as a community and as a people in the seventh largest economy on planet Earth. Now, this issue that we've been talking about because the theme with Alberto and others and the torch that Holly Mitchell has carried in the state capitol, now sometimes it may make us feel good about helping those who are marginalized, the downtrodden, los de abajo, los marginados, etc., etc. But if we're going to maintain the seventh largest economy on planet Earth, we have to make sure that we're inclusive of all individuals. That's why her progressive agenda is an agenda for all working people throughout the state of California. And by the way, let me say this. I know this woman has some Latin blood in her. <laughs> and the reason why I say this is because, and I just know this from personal experience. Uh -oh. well, we didn't go that far. Oh. <laughs> Not that that would be a bad thing, that would be a privilege. <laughs> ah, I'm just saying. <laughs> Holly's getting all blood red. <laughs> but Holly and I, we dance merengue, we dance cumbia, we dance salsa. I'm telling you, as a Latin brother, this woman knows how to dance, not music. So with that, let's take a quick moment and let's you right here in the screen, a video which is going to talk a little about Senator Holly Mitchell. <laughs>